Old High German Syntax Dative Case The dative means the indirect object. The indirect object. Usually the person to or for or with reference to whom something is done. When used with verbs, the general idea of the verb implies a kind of giving or taking away or removing or the opposite of giving, if you will. So that's something to bear in mind is that the dative is the indirect object. You know, the, well, it could be a person, it could be a thing, depending on what's going on in the sentence. But let's move on. To give an example, a very simple example of what the dative actually is, we have a sentence that I wrote here. Ich gebu demu hunte bien. I give the dog a bone. So the subject is ich, is I, and gebu is the verb. I give what? What am I giving? I'm giving a den, a bone, and bone is the direct object you know that's what i'm doing that's the the verb is interacting uh directly first because you know the cues that are being the direct object it's what's happening directly you know i give a bone i give a bone okay now to move on who who to whom that bone is for then we get into the dative so ich gebu uh, themu hunte. I give who the bone? I give, uh, I, I, yeah, I give uh, to who the bone? I give the dog a bone. So therefore, themu hunte. These are both in the dative. They're in the dative because uh, they're the indirect object. They're not the direct object. Because I'm giving a bone to who? I'm giving it to the dog. This is in the. This is a, a definite article. The singular, uh, masculine. Because we're talking about a dog here. Uh, hunte, or and this is the uh, dative singular of hund, meaning dog. And so there you have it. So this is a small example among many examples later in this video, uh, which will give how, well, which will tell you which which will show you how the dative works and whatnot. So let's move on. Dative of interest or benefit. In this context, the dative is like saying for, or for this, or for that. Let's move on. So with our first, so, so here, so here's our first example. Skifu, iu alem, ich werhum. All right, so what does this mean? So. Uh, ships uh, for you, so to speak, alem, and all for you all, I work or I make. Okay, so let's dissect this. So we have our subject here with ich. We have our verb here, werchum, I work, I make, or I construct, if you will. Um, I construct what? I construct um, ships or skipvu. Uh, this is a, a reconstructed... Um, uh, spelling of, of the plural usually I believe in old high German it's it's just like this it, like they, you know there's no distinction between with some nouns uh, in the neuter um, yeah and some nouns with the neuter um, that uh, the plural is the same as the singular but like give, given uh, since I like to take a page from old English uh, or if you will use older spellings from well what would be to uh, um, a Proto-West Germanic, I put in there skifu. All right. So anyway, moving on. Um, so ich werchum, I work or I make, I construct. I construct what? I construct ships. And then we have iu alem. Iu alem. This is, so this begs the question, what is in the dative? Well, iu alem is in the dative because this, this is like saying, this is you. Uh, plural in the dative, and we have alem, which is a um, an adjective. Uh, it's the word all, but declined in the dative plurals like for you all. The, as you can, as you notice here, there's no preposition for for. That's why we have the, the, the well, we have the dative, 
to kind of say that for us without actually putting the preposition there. You know, it would be kind of redundant uh, to put the preposition there when it's already implied with the with or with it already being in in the in the dative. So, so ich, uh, pardon me, ich werde home. Yeah, pardon me, skiffu, um, you allem ich werde home. You know, f ships for you, for you all. I work slash make and yeah. So so allem goes with. Uh, you, because it's you know they're both in the same case, whatnot. So yeah, moving on. Our second example includes a reflexive. All right, so let's read this out. Thus, see in Wafenu Wertin Wertin. Thus, see in Wafenu Wertin. So that that they for themselves weapons uh, worked made. Okay, so again, like skifu, uh, this is an, uh, in the same uh, uh, circumstance where it's this, where the old high, the actual old high German is, is just like this, with this, where the date of, sorry, pardon me, where the plural and the singular are the same, to take the same form, but uh, I like to use older uh, spellings to to to, dis to uh, discriminate between singular and plural to make things easier for you guys. Um, but this could have may have been attested, but 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 that's for another discussion. But anyway, let's move on. So that's weapons. So this is weapons here. So anyway, so we have that see im Waffenu Werchtin. So that they for themselves weapons worked uh, slash made. So what is the subject here? So we have uh, our subject is see it, so they, and we have im. This is in uh, the dative. This is the data plural. So so C, so they, for themselves, uh, you know, uh, uh, weapons worked made. So 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 our verb is werchtin. Our direct object is wafenu. So we'll just put that in blue. I mean, you know, regardless of the form of the, uh, you know, the main principle is is the the case that I'm trying to articulate here, right? So anyway. Yeah, anyway, uh, and yeah, anyway, so we have um, so that is our acute that is our direct object, our direct object, a wafenu, and our dative is right here, it's im. So, that's like uh, a conjunctive, uh, that if you will, uh, that's see im wafenu werktin. So, they made. They made what? They made weapons for who? They made weapons for themselves. In, you know, so this is in, in the plural. So is this in the plural? You know, this is nominative, and th and this is in the dative. Uh, this is in the dative. Let's move on. Here we have the dative of possession. So this is using the dative in a really weird way of expressing possession. So we have here. Imu, fialun, tsehari, phone, them, ogum. Imu, fialun, tsehari, pardon me, tsehari, yeah, tsehar, yeah, tsehari, phone, them, ogum. Them, ogum. So his tears fell from the eyes. So what is being articulated here? as the dative of possession. Well, there would be imu. Imu would he, would be, is in the dative and it's being used here. It's like him, tears uh, fell, tears from the eyes. So this is, in, this is a, a roundabout, this is a roundabout way of saying his, uh, his tears from, fell from his eyes. And we can do that with the dative, right? So, but as far as what else is in the dative, we have from the eyes. Uh, whoa, excuse me. Uh, from the eyes. So we have fon them ogom. Fon them ogom. So we have here in the dative as well. This is the dative plural because this is in the dative plural. All right, so let's make that red so we can see what is in the uh, dative. But the main thing 
is that uh, Imu is being used here as like the dative of possession and whatnot. So let's move on. Our second example is Im man facht ana leist. Im man facht ana leist. Their man fought on track. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, we have Im. Uh, this is this is in the dative, so it's like saying them. Yeah, it's it's like them. Yeah, that it's like saying them, them man. Uh, fact on a list all right so the, the like uh, them if you will man um, fought uh, on track um, yeah that, that's something to uh, bear in mind you know the thing is that with Anna here this is uh, the preposition on um, this might seem confusing here, like, oh, why isn't it, why is, why is laced not in the dative? Well, the thing is with Anna, I mean, this is a little off topic, but relevant right now, uh, is that uh, on, uh, as in Old English, I would, you can say the same for Old High German, is that Anna, uh, when talk about manner, how something is done, uh, in with this preposition, uh, like, if I were to say do it, or I speak in English, or do it in this way, or it ha yeah, do it like if I were to say I speak in English. Um, therefore, uh, you know the, the on verb um, or ana would, would take the accusative. All right, so this is a little off topic, but I just wanted to explain that you know just to cover that confusion. So anyway, um, in a very roundabout way, um, in a very roundabout way, like you, uh, the date of possession is like him. Uh, man, man uh, a man, uh, well, their man fought on 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 track or whatnot. Uh, they, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, to to re to be very um, to to translate this a little better, actually, it's like like their man fought on 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 like on on foot. Because this word laced it also means footprint, so it's a way of saying like like their man fought on on foot, if you will, or on track or or foot you know um that might be a better translation actually actually but anyway so the point is that their man data possession in all right so let's uh move on our third example wolfum c willen wolfum c willen so as wolves uh, i mean willen can mean um this is I'll explain in a second, uh, like what the case is, but like it, like it means will, request, delight. Um, so what is in the date of a possession here? Well, it would be wolfum. This is in the date of possession. Uh, so so to the wolves or wolves is um, will, request, delight. We have our uh, preposition here at C, which is like saying two in English, um, and then we got willen. This is actually in the, the dative, actually. So, um, so uh, the way to, given that this, where this is from, this is translated from Old English into Old High German, and it's from a poetic text um, th that, uh, the, well, the thing is with, with older languages, especially Old English, is that when you want to say, when you want to express like, like uh, as a friend or as a or as a will or as a request or as a or what have you you take the word toll uh, and then you make whatever after it uh, in in the singular dative right so we have here c which is our like english two or toll in old english and then we have our dative singular a whittlen so um so like wolves is um you know like like as like as the wolves is request i mean there are multiple ways of translating this but understand but understand that uh who is the possessor of of the will of the or the request or delight well it's the wolves right so i'll put this as well in red um because it's also in dative but remember that this is the, is the dative of possession so i'll make that bold actually so yeah moving on Dative of deprivation. The object being removed is in the dative and the person in question is in the accusative. So let's move on. 
Here's our first example. Er enan unscrew tita demu halben skihale. Yeah, so what is in the accusative and what is in, what is the dative of object being removed? So therefore the dative of deprivation. What's going on here? So he undressed himself uh, the half coat. All right. Um, uh, the, the words with the asterisk here, again, these are reconstructions, uh, but I won't go too much into detail because uh, I can be too detail, too detailed oriented with that. But that, but anyway, let's carry on. So he, him, uh, so he is our subject. Er is our subject. So but what is our accusative? Pardon me. What is our accusative of person? Well, here it's in none. We'll make this blue. Make this n non, make it blue. So that's our accusative. So so it's so in this context, uh, the accusative is being used in reflexive context. So he himself, he himself. So uh, we have here un uh, unscrewed So he undressed himself. He undressed or he stripped. He 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 took off. He 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 removed. He removed what? He removed. Themu halben skichale. Themu halben skichale. All right. So this is all in the dative. He removed what? He removed. Or he undressed. Um, well, he stripped. Uh, well, specifically, the themu halben skichale, which is the half coat. So we have this is in the dative. Halben is in the dative, uh, halben is in the uh, dative, and so is skechale. These are all in the dative, and whatnot. So that's the yeah. So let's move on. So here is our second example. Dingum intgarawita inti genachotota. So what is going on here? So we have a translation here that I did. Things undressed or unprepared. I mean, th this word, can, depending on the context, it can mean undressed or unprepared uh, or undone, if you will. I mean, th that's by extension, but really undressed, un uh, unprepared. And here we have, uh, and, and made naked, or, or, or yeah, made naked, or made bare, if you will. But the, I think the literal uh, translation is like made naked, or to make something naked, or or to, na to, to, to make something naked. Anyway, anyway. Um, so what is our dative of uh, deprivation here? It's vingum. Uh, uh, That's our dative. Uh, this is a conjunction of and, inti, while uh, these two words here, int garaweta and genacho uh, tota, these are verbs. So, so that the thing in question being undressed or unprepared or taken away or what have you is in the dative. And this is in the dative plural. Let's move on. Dative of resemblance or approach. This is an example of approach, and this is with verbs. So with our example here, Geflis kimet them behaltantum. Geflis kimet them behaltantum. So strife comes to the, uh, to the beholders slash spe uh, spectators. So what is in the dative here? So geflis, uh, this is our subject. Kimit is our verb. Uh, them is in the dative, dative plural. So dative plural, and this is also in the dative plural. So because we're talking about the strife or the conflict or the quarrel, if you will, coming to the beholders or slash speculators and whatnot. So this is a, an example of dative of approach. Moving on. Here is our example of dative of resemblance with adjectives. And so we have here er fugele gelich hosto ist. Uh, he is most similar to a bird. Okay, this uh, phrase this uh, usage of the uh, of the dative needs some explaining. Okay, so our subject is er, he, um, and we have our verb here, ist, which is is, so it's part of the verb to be, or wesan, sorry, pardon me, wesan in Old High German. So he is, so he 
er ist, he is most similar. So this is a superlative adjective. So the most, he is the most, uh, most what? Most similar. Uh, this is in the, um, this is in the nominative. This is in the nominative. So because er is in the nominative. So he is most similar. Okay. To what? Um, and that would be fugale. Uh, fugal, uh, fugal, well, this, this is in the dative. In the dative singular. So, so, uh, so it's like saying, um, so the, so the adjective, uh, jelich, um, and it's uh, variants of uh, like superlative or comparative. Um, yeah, this goes with the noun in question that you're comparing or, 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 or making more similar. But what you're, but but the latter part, what you're making it similar to, that takes the dative. So if you want to say he is similar to a, I don't know, a dog, dog would be in the dative. As here. Uh, he is most similar, most similar to what? Uh, most similar to a bird. So this would be in the dative. Hope that makes sense. Moving on. Dative with various verbs. This part of the video is going to show many examples uh, in different contexts of how the dative is used with certain verbs and whatnot. So here we go with our first one. Uh, A, giving or imparting. Uh, Darbom uh, telen. So this is, well, about this distributing. So to distribute, uh, we have our infinit infinitive verb here, teven, teilen, teilen. So to distribute to what? To needy ones. And needy ones is in the dative here. It's in the dative plural. So let's make that red. So yeah, to, to give or really to distribute uh, with this verb. Uh, to distribute, to, to share, if you will, in some contexts, it can mean that, like to distribute to the needy ones. All right, let's move on. B, speaking. We have iru irrahota. Iru irrahota. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, this needs uh, explaining. Um, this verb here, um, it means explained. Like or the literal uh, tr a translation is like a way stretched, but it's used here sort of poetically to say explained or or unraveled. Uh, so explained, so explained, explained to who? Explained to her. So and her is in the dative. So this is in the dative. Her. Moving on. B again with with a speaking uh, example we have imu. Gekunden, imu gekunden. So, what does this mean? So, this is a, again another infinitive verb, but this is to do with him. So it's like, um, so it's to him, uh, the, the, you know, with this verb to to. Well, it, it means a number of things. It means it can mean tell, um, but more often, in a way, it's more how can I word this it's more it means more like made known to so and so but but uh but you can translate it as tell so so this is an infinitive so um so uh so to him uh to, or if you will to tell him uh, or made made known to him yeah so this will take the dative so this is our dative and this is, has, has to do with speaking, telling, or making known. So, yeah, to him. All right, moving on. C, thanking. Uh, in this example here, we have Gote Vankonti. Uh, Vankonti. So, this is a, a, a present participle. So, it's thanking. Thanking to who? Thanking to God. So, and, and, and God would be in the dative here. So thanking to God. Yeah. So the, the cool thing about the dative it like it already implies uh, the the preposition. Well not so that's why it's not there. Uh, well not so it's like you know to add the preposition would be sort of redundant. You know? So that's why in many cases where it's just left out. Um, 
you know, you see this a lot in poetry and whatnot, but that's a little off topic right now. But anyway, the point is, is that with uh, verbs of like thanking, whatnot, uh, it takes the dative. Like who you're thanking? Oh, you're thanking God. So, dative. Gulte is our dative. Moving on. D, promising. With our example here of er bichas mi nemu lerarie. So er bichas bichas mi nemu lerarie. So he promised to my teacher. So where is our dative? Our dative is here. Mi nemu mi nemu lerarie. That's our dative. Because who is he promising to? He's promising to, to my teacher. Let's move on. E. Serving and benefiting. With the first example, er imu veganta. Er imu veganta. So he, to him, served. Or if you will, you know, without the preposition or two, with, to, of two, it's just he served him. Um, so the person that that uh, the, that is being served takes the dative and the person doing the serving you know in this in this small sentence here um, it's in it's in the nominative so what is in the dative here it's imu so he served him er imu veganta veganta so yeah he him uh, served so yeah or he served him anyway moving on our second example, er fremme gehuelig, gehuelig anderem, anderem. So he perform which to slash for others. Uh, the preposition is omitted here because it's um, implied through what? The dative. And where is our dative? Our dative is right here. Anderem, dative plural. Our dative plural. Um, and here's our verb, our subject, and I believe this is our accusative here. Uh, it's this which um, is kind of like saying that. Um, so uh, like what he's performing, if you will. So he perform and, and fremma here is in the subjunctive. Uh, subjunctive um, present singular. So it's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of almost like saying like he would or like it's like oh, like hypothetical, if you will. But uh, it's like he perform which um, uh, for others, for others, to others. Yeah. So that's our dative. So we're and he. So he, our subject is serving others, right? So moving on. Our third example: imu fiang got. Anna Fola Zucht. So him took God in support. So what's going on here? Um, where's our dative? Our dative is here. Imu. Him uh, took uh, God. So so what again? Well, what's our subject here? Our subject is God here. God took him in support. So Anna. It, it, or on, on or in if you will in fulla uh, fulla uh, uh, this is actually in the accusative because this has to do with um, I believe the manner in manner so but the point is anyway so when it comes to serving or benefiting um, you know like the person that's benefiting or the person that's being served uh, that takes the dative and our dative is right here. All right, let's move on. Our fourth example, managen genugtsamen. Managen genugtsamen. So this means to to be abundant slash enough slash sufficient to, uh, for or to many. So like for... So the people that, are, so where is our dative? Our dative is right here, our plural dative to be exact. So this is our plural dative. So, and, and this is our verb here, meaning to be abundant, 
enough, sufficient, sufficient for who or for who? Well, it's um, the many, if you will, or, or, or for many, right? And here we have it in the date of managem. Let's move on. F, obeying and following. And here's, here's our first example. Gehor samon minemu minemu willen. So, gehor samon minemu minemu willen. So, and this means uh, to make or be obedient to my wish slash will slash demand. So, where is our date of? Our dative is right here. It's <clears throat> minemu and willen. These are both in the dative. Yeah, they're both in the dative, and so uh, yeah, to make o to make obedient to my will, or be o or yeah, or be obedient to my will. This is um, the verb uh, to make o uh, obedient or be obedient, um, and this is the infinitive infinitive form of that verb, right? And and it takes the date of here, as you can see, as you can see. Moving on. Our second example is siu iru folgeta. Siu iru folgeta. So we've got siu. This is our subject. We have folgeta. Geta. This is our um, our uh, our verb. And so she followed who followed her. Followed her and her is in the dative. Simple as that. Moving on. G. Pitying. Uh, we have here gemility. Gemility. Gemility mir. Gemility mir. Gemility mir. Uh, this is like saying as a command or saying as like a plea for help or pitying, if you will. Uh, it's like be merciful to me, show mercy to me, uh, have mercy to, to me. And where is our dative? Our dative is right here. So, so yeah, to me, for me, be merciful. Da 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 da. da. Takes the dative, and whatnot. So let's do that. <laughs> Moving on. H, requiting slash. Well, I mean, requiting is an older way of saying. Uh, repaying, so repaying back. So we have our sentence here, or our phrase here, or sorry, our fragment here. Fir gel fir fir geltan, fir geltan, eu gehuel eu gehuelihem, eu gehuelihem. It's quite a mouthful to say, but. Anyway, um, so this means to pay back everyone. Um, so where is our dative? Uh, our data is right here. So to everyone. This is in the data plural. And this is our verb, to, to pay back, if you will. All right, let's move on. I, ruling. We have your theotum rechun. Rechun. So the verb here, uh, rechon, this means to direct, or it can mean to take course of action. And so our, our well, where's our dative? Well, our dative is theo, or pardon me, theot, theotum. we put that in red, so that is our dative. So it's like saying uh, to direct to peoples, uh, to take course of action for peoples or to peoples. And whatnot. So this is in the data plural. This just to point it out there. Moving on. Another example of ruling, but this is more poetic. Uh, we have er un uh, un stillita stillita. So he uh, calmed. So he calmed. He stilled, if you will. If you want to be very literal, he stilled uh, waves. And where is our dative? Our dative is right here. So he he calmed the waves. He stilled the waves. So this is a very poetic way of saying ruling or, or what have you. Moving on. J. Receiving. Er int fiang veru wonungu. Er int fiang veru wonungu. So he received the dwelling. We have er, 
that's our subject, he. Entfiang, that's our verb. Zero wonungu. Uh, what's that? That is, take a guess, it's our dative. That's right, that's our dative. So we have the word the. We have a de definite article, uh, and, um, a f definite article, feminine. Uh, yeah, feminine, uh, singular. So this is in the feminine singular. Uh, it's like the. Uh, what we have here a uh, wonungu. This is in the dative as well. Uh, feminine and um, and it means dwelling. So um, so that's so yeah. So when when it comes to verbs and um, well in this context when it comes to receiving, you know it takes the dative. So and this is our example here. Moving on. K pleasing and suiting. So we have our first example of here of imu alen liheta der sang. Okay, um, with a sentence like this, uh, when it comes to like verbs that do with pleasing or liking, what have you, you almost have to read the sentence backwards. <laughs> I know that may sound a little weird. Uh, you may have to read it somewhat from the right to the left rather than usually from the left to the right. So what we have here is imu. This is our dative. Yes, uh, our dative is right here. Uh, and him as well as alem, that's in the dative as well. Let's uh, uh, say like uh, to him completely. Um, this actually is in the, um, is the dative, but used adverbally, but I'll speak about that uh, a bit on that later. Anyway, so, um, and this is in the dative plural, just, just, to, just to put that, point that out there. So to him completely, li heta, um, well, pleased, if you will, pleased the song. Uh, the song. So another way of writing this whole sentence would be like saying the song uh, pleased uh, to, to him completely, if you will. That'd be another way of writing it. But uh, given uh, this time period and whatnot uh, in Old English, and you know by extension, you know the other West Germanic Germanic languages as well. Um, to say you like something. Uh, you can you can you can express it through this way as well. So like, to him, uh, com yeah. So to him, you know, starting with the uh, dative here. So yeah. So that's our dative. Moving on. Here's a second example of wir uh, getabenot der uh, sang. Uh, this word here is a complete uh, reconstruction. Um, anyway, I just want to point, point that out there. I know I've said it time and time again that the, the star it represents a reconstruction and not from the period. It's hypothesized. But anyway, um, again, uh, you almost have to read this uh, sentence backwards. So it's really the song, the song, their song, uh, um, seemed fitting. Yeah, that, that's the way to translate this. Seems, um, yeah, it seems. Yeah, uh, well, not just seems, but like seems fitting to be to be, be very, uh, um, to be very specific, uh, uh, to you, dir. So like same like this previous sentence, uh, it starts with the the dative, dir, and then we have uh, give, and then we have the verb, and then we end off with well, actually der song is actually in the nominative. So where's our dative? Our dative is dir. Our dative is there. Moving on. L seeming. Um, here, where we where we have a verb, if you will, in our example, mir uh, uh, dunkit, mir dunkit. Uh, this is like how in um, in some parts of, some parts of um, England or even Scotland, where even today, uh, people say uh, me thinks. Um, but that isn't the same word as to, th to think, rather it's from another verb, um, thunkan, and this is the uh, old high German cognate to that. So like, uh, thun, thunkit, um, the way you use it is the way you see it here. It's like, it's to me, uh, uh, quote unquote, it seems. So it seems to me so-and-so that, that it does, seems to me, uh, the, you know, the day is going well, seems to me. So mir uh, dunkit uh, uh, like uh, s seems to me that and so where is our dative? Our dative is right here with mir. So to me, all right. So 
yeah, moving on. Next, we have opposing, um, and with our example of weralti, weralti widar sahan, weralti widar sahan. So this, uh, we have our verb here, widar sahan, which means to reject, to reject, and we got weralti. Uh, you can translate it as world, but like in this time. It meant, yeah, it, that's the thing. The word, this word, uh, weralt, um, it meant age, it meant time, and by extension, mankind, but really age and time. Uh, you know, so uh, that's what w the word world meant back then. So, world, uh, so, and, and, and this is our dative. This is our dative. So, we put this in red. So, that's our dative. Yeah. So, if you want to express opposing, uh, you use the dative, and, and this is our verb for that, to, to reject, if you will. Moving on. N, betraying or deserting. Uh, depending on the context, it can be either or. Uh, we have our sentence here of er uh, suihit dir. Er suihit uh, dir. So he, uh, you, you can translate this as like, uh, he betrays you or he deserts you. Uh, but given that our dative is here with dir, uh, a way to translate this in English would be like, he proves a traitor to you. So, um, yeah, because the dative sort of implies that extra part. It implies or infers the extra part, infers like the, the, the preposition or what have you. So a way to translate this again would be like he betrays you, he or he he deserts you, or uh, he proves a traitor to you. Er swihit, swih yeah. Er swihit dir, dir yeah. Moving on. O, using. Er nusot, crafty, mineru. Er nusot. Nu sort crafty mineru mineru. So he enjoys my craft. So we got our, our subject here, er. We have a verb here, uh, nu sort, which means to make use of, uh, to enjoy, if you will, um, to use, if you will, uh, to, yeah, to make use of, uh, to enjoy. Um, and we and our so where's our dative? Our dative is in crafty and mineru. So these are both in the dative. And yeah, so yeah, so he uses he's part of it. He enjoys my craft, or he enjoys yeah, my, yeah. I mean the word craft uh, in, in in old West Germanic languages can be can mean a number of things. You know, it can mean craft, it can mean power, it can mean ec excellence. Yeah, it could mean excellence. It can mean um, a number of things, you know. So, anyway, uh, so our, so he enjoys my craft, and and our dative's are are crafty and mineru. So yeah, moving on. Some verbs take the dative, such as flu flu fluhon, fluhon, to speak evil of, folgen, to follow. Helfan to help, theonon, theonon to serve. As well, there are verbs that take pretty much well accusative, genitive, and dative just to throw in there, like uh, gehan or if you will yehan, uh, meaning to confess or to witness or what have you, right? So to to confess, witness. All right, moving on. Dative with adjectives. The dative is used with adjectives that mean dear, generous, obedient, or the opposite of those adjectives. So to explain this in present English, it'd be like saying, he was dear to them, he was important to them. Or the opposite of that, he was not nice to them, he was mean to them. So, so whoever is on the receiving end, so to speak, of, um, would take the dative. Moving on. Our first example is lit wara game ensti. Lit wara game ensti. Ship worry to consent or will. Okay, so 
I have to unpack this. So where is our dative that's like on the receiving end of like uh, the adjective? Well, that would be ends t right here. It's ship we uh, uh, weary. Okay, hang on. So this is our dative that's on the receiving end, but this is also on the dative because this is part of a longer sentence that um, this is an adjective meaning ship weary, like ship tired, if you will. Like uh, those people were ship um, weary to uh, consent uh, or slash will. Uh, this is in the dative as well, but but the dative that that's on the receiving end, you know, to you know, is really really here. Uh, I'll put this in, in bold. All right, put them bold. I'll put this in red as well because they're both in the dative. Uh, this is in the date of plural. This so there's you know so it's probably talking about a crew of men, um, a crew of people uh, that are ship wary to to will slash consent. But uh, this is the main main. Let make it a little bigger. So yeah. So this is the main uh, you know uh, target of of, of date of, of what we're we're getting at here. So like he was, so they were it's quote unquote ship weary to will slash consent. Okay, moving on. Here's our second example. And I have to say that this is, this is part of a longer sentence, but so bear with me. Uh, Gote, then, uh, Leobun, uh, Fater. So, so what's going on here? Uh, so to God, the dear father. So where's our dative? Our dative is here with uh, Gote, that's God. So to God, uh, the dear father. Um, so like, well, it, a, a way to translate this uh, another way in present English, like the dear father uh, to God, or like the like the father is dear to, to God, right? So the father in question is dear to God. So right, it's because because thing is, um, all of this here is actually in the accusative, because again, this is a part. Of, this. Uh, Excuse me. This is a part of a longer sentence. So, uh, another way of um, of translating this would be like the dear father, like the the dear father to God, or had this been written differently, it'd be like saying the father dear to God, right? As my uh, previous, similar to my previous uh, present English example of um, uh, you know, uh, like they were nice or he was nice to them. In the same way here, uh, the father uh, dear uh, to God or something like that. But like, so the receiving end to the to the um, adjective, if you will, is in the dative here, and it's uh, gote, God, God. Let's move on. So here is our third example of b. Part of him bihobi, bihobi, ich bin kuninge. So useful slash necessary i am to who uh the king and where is our dative our dative is right here kuninge kuninge so that is our dative um this is our adjective i'm uh, useful or slash necessary um and there's our subject uh ich and our verb uh, to be uh, bim bim uh, you know like the am like in english i am so useful I am to who? The king. And the king here is in dative. Let's move on. Our fourth example is folkum firkund. Folkum firkund, or really later pronunciation, uh, firkund. Uh, so what's going on here? So we have our adjective, and this means a number of things. Uh, vile. By extension, you couldn't. It could mean like um, insulting, um, revolting, if you will, like vile uh, to who or vile to peoples. Folkum and folkum is is our dative. So vile to who, insulting to who, uh, peoples. So that's our dative. Moving on. So here we have a dative with adjectives, but in, in the context of like want and want, and this is like an older way of saying lacking, or if you will, deprivation. So here's, here's our example of gote uh, arfim, 
gute ar firm. So this is an adjective, and uh, and this is means to God. So again, um, our adjective is here. Uh, I mean, this word it means worthless, means unprovided, if you will. And our dative, like to who? Uh, un worthless and unprovided to who? Well, that's in the dative, and our dative is gute, God. Moving on. Dative with prepositions. Well, what can be said here about uh, prepositions that the thing is, is that most of them, majority of them take the dative. If you see a preposition, chances are they're going to take the dative, but but don't like assume, oh, I see a preposition. Oh, I'm just going to use the dative blindly. S still, I recommend, I highly recommend to still look up the entry of the, of the preposition in question to find out whether it does actually take the dative. Just because most of them take the dative does not mean all of them take the dative, okay? To repeat again, there are prepositions that take the accusative generally and others, depending on the context, would otherwise take the dative, okay? And I'm going to go further in that. Generally, when there is motion, like movement, uh, use the accusative. You know, if you have a preposition and there's movement, um, like going towards, if you will, uh, use the accusative. But when there is rest, use the dative when it comes to uh, prepositions. And the, you got to bear in mind the context because sometimes the opposite is true depending on what's going on and how uh, the preposition is being used and whatnot. So the opposite can be true and the, and the context matters. Moving on. So we have our first example here of Anna mit mit temu demu sewe sewe. So our preposition is Anna, and well, where where are our datives? Well, uh, they're all right here. So in what in middle the sea or slash lake. So this, these are our datives. We got middle, we got the, and we have sewe. That's our, yeah, that is our dative. Yeah. So here is our second example of Anna Veru Festinu Festinu Obana Warteru. So in or on, on above slash top, the fortification. So what's going on here? So we have, so, so we got Deru which is a dative, a dative feminine, because we have our word for fortification here. This is in the, in the dative, and it's feminine. And so is this word. Um, it's an adjective, meaning uh, it can mean a number of things. It can, be, it can mean upper part, uh, and by extension, it can, but it generally a more surface understanding would be like above. So, yeah, so like in... Uh, in so pardon me on uh, uh, the uh, the for on the so pardon me on the fortification above so or on or if you will on above or on top the fortification so this is also in the dative as well so so ana veru festinu obana warteru so these are these are in the dative except for ana because that's a preposition. That's definite article, our noun, and our adjective. Pretty straightforward. Moving on. Adverbial dative. The thing is with Old High German, like Old English, uh, you can take adjectives and nouns and put them in, in their dative, and, 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 and that of itself, uh, such words can be used adverbally. So, for example, we have the adjective all, uh, yeah, all, and this is we have we have this in the data plural, and and we, we use we can use this adverbally, meaning totally or completely. And next we have a noun in the plural dative, uh, meaning in crowds. So, yeah, why don't I make these endings red? So these are the that's data plural, dative plural, and here we have folun, which is interesting. It means um. Well, it's from the verb fulla, meaning uh, like a plenty. Uh, but here uh, in the singular dative, singular dative, 
uh, and again, this is a noun, in the singular dative, uh, used adverbally, it means completely, uh, sufficiently, uh, fully. So, yeah, so let's make that into, yeah, red. And so, yeah, so, so when you, so you can take a, um, uh, so, so pardon me, there are uh, uh, adverbs that are derived from adjectives and nouns. Moving on. Dative absolute. An influence of Latin onto Old English, or if you will, of course, on the Old English and, and what to say of the uh, Old High German and all that. And all that. Uh, the, do, as an influence of Latin, uh, the Latin ablative absolute uh, is uh, imitated in, in you know in old English by extension old high German as well where nouns and participles in the dative can if you will stand on their own and and be used adverbal adverbally for time let's begin we have our first example here of entfangenero sinero blu bluo tungu so received his blessing so what's in the dative here well pretty much everything here is in the dative uh but, but i mean joking aside well yes they're all in the dative but what's the uh participle here it's int uh, fangenero in int fangen fangen fangenero this is the past participle of uh, uh int uh, fahren meaning to um, receive, right? Among many other things, uh, to, to receive, to accept, whatnot. So th that will be our dative, intended dative. We'll make that a little bigger and in bold. And yes, these are in the dative as well. So dative absolute, like, you know, as, as it, um, the name suggests, you know, everything is in the dative. It's just the, the nuance is that so is the, uh, the uh, uh, participles, in this case, the past participle. Moving on. Here is a second example uh, of the dative absolute. Uh, we, we have vesem allen dus getanen, getanen. So let's, let's break this down. So we have our definite article. This is, uh, or demonstrative uh, article. It's like saying these. Like, uh, it's like saying this, but in the plural dative, actually. So this is our dative. Alem is our, in our dative as well. This is like an adjective. So like these all, uh, or yeah, these all, if you will. And then we have thus. Uh, this is a, a um, an adverb. And then we have getanem. This is our dative. That's in, well, that's a uh, participle, past participle in the dative. So... We'll make that a little larger so you know so that's the data that we're, we're, we're talking about here well i mean really all of them really so so we have data 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 everywhere so data absolute so like, like so you know um so for these all if you will to these all so uh, um thus uh done so this is um declined um like an adjective you know, uh, you know, for these previous, um, you know, uh, d datives as well. Um, given that this is the, you know, the only isolated sentence we have, right? So, yeah, so it's dative absolute. Pretty much everything here is in the dative, except for the adverb here, but moving on. Finally, finally, sometimes the dative is used for the instrumental. This is the case because at this time, the dative was falling out of use, uh, as well as it was merging with the dative, as it was the case with Old English. Uh, so we have our example here of Clifforta Michelero Stimnun. Clifforta Michelero Stimnun. So what's going on here? So we have uh, this verb here meaning cried out. Um, this is in the past tense, cried out, and we have uh, our uh, well. Where 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 are our datives? Our datives are right here. So the only difference is that the only nuance is that this is a noun and this is an adjective. Um, cried out, great voice, 
um, and so we have the dative here, uh, but it's used like an instrumental. In brief, I will make a video on, on the instrumental case. Uh, in, in very brief words, um, the instrumental is like saying like by what means, like with or by. So in this context, it's well. I mean, a very an, op an oversimplification would be like almost calling it almost like an adverb. But uh, but it's more nuanced than that. It's it's more there's more to it than that than that. But in this context, uh, we have here cried out. Um, a, uh, well, great voice. I mean, I, I, it'd be better to translate this as cried out with a, a great voice, or you know, or uh, or by uh, a great voice would be a better translation actually. So, and and in this time, so the dative is is used. To express this and whatnot, so to to mean like a company with uh, or by, if you will. So um, yeah, but I will make a video on um, the instrumental. Anyway, moving on. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you're new. And if you really like the channel, please become a patron at my Patreon page down below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.